Exactly. <laughs> Airplane. When's the last time you flew, dude? Airplane movie. It's, it's, everything's on an iPad. You need your own device now. <laughs> the whole thing, the screen's in the back of the seat in front of you, and they don't happen. Okay. okay. That's right. Well, it depends on what airplane you're flying. I well, I guess if you got your G7, I guess you're right. Okay, if you're flying your Gulfstream. And was there, so it was good. We had a great time, and then got to train last night. Someone brought cake, and it was like a forbidden fruit. Okay, you're not allowed to bring cake to a 100K meeting, all right? But uh, so uh, some of them, in, what's that? That's right, exactly. Okay, so they they did indulge of, of some of that, so that was good. Um, it was my anniversary yesterday. So I saw that. Congratulations! You picked a great day to get married. That was awesome. Is that part of the, your plan, right? Part of your reason? It was. I That's what I thought. Out, you know, a year before I started here, that yeah. your birthday was on that. Sweetheart, you know, you know, this is the day. <laughs> that's perfect. See, that's awesome. See, I, I, I knew there was a method to your madness. So, okay, so everybody here, I'm looking around, no newbies, right? Everybody's 100K veteran. Awesome, good. Had a couple new ones last night that uh, uh, um, we had to kind of get caught up, so we're not going to spend some time catching up. We can go through this. This is the stuff, remember, this is our, some of our goals. I mean, how we're gonna go about doing this stuff, right? Is that we're gonna learn and grow and, and feed off everybody else in the room. By the way, if you're not part of the 100K group page, get on that page. I'm telling you, there are great answers to your questions. There's inspiration there. There's mot it's motivating to see people say, hey, you know, it's motivating to see Chris. I just sat my own, it was awesome, man. It was right midstream, he's like, I'm at this bank, I won't say it, because Allie will say it, uh, open house, and I'm writing an offer on this deal. That, that, that wasn't that awesome, you know? He, you know what? It didn't work out. I understand. He's, uh, he's checking my MLS. I'm sending him perfect. A day, yeah. So he's gonna be out. With That's him. all it's about, right? It's not to sell that home, and if you, that would have been like a you know sheer bonus, right, on top of everything. But the key is, you know, and he showed how yeah, you showed him how fast you work and how things go, and now you set him up on he's a search. Signing a contract from his cell phone, standing next to me five minutes <laughs> later. I, I mean, we had that dialed. That is awesome. That's cool. And now you got, you know what, I'm just telling, and that was on a Tuesday afternoon, 11 to 1. Am I correct? Yeah, I left around 2 because I couldn't get people out the door. What's that? <laughs> Oy vey, such a problem to have. All right. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just telling you, those of you who are waiting to do it, stop waiting, please. Right? Just go do it. We won't show Chris's post. Chris, you got, he's, the, he, he's got all sorts of links. He found Hama for us. Right, he found the hammer link. All right, and then he also found the uh, what was it? The just do it. Well, who's that dude? What's his name? Um, oh, I forget the name of the guy. <laughs> yeah. um, he's the guy from uh, all the Transformer movies. Oh, is that okay? This was a video back when I was at Publix that we would show the stock works. Oh, yeah, okay, so gotcha. Okay, very cool. Love, awesome. That was great because you'd say, just do it. Yeah, it was, it was you know, because that's what we're trying to say, right? It doesn't matter really what you do. If you just go do it, get eyeball. Remember we changed it, it's no longer open houses, it's traffic generating events, yeah. right? Whatever that might be, okay? Just go get to a point where you can get eyeball to eyeball with people, right? And so stop waiting for the perfect time, the perfect place, all my signs are coming in, BS. Go steal some from the Seminole office like Chris did, or all right? Or from me when I have them out there, because I've had 
had four okay, so you go. That's right. Exactly. Okay. That's all right. Cost of doing business, bro. There you go. See? And I know you, uh, and, and Dan, you've had several. Yeah, I've had, a, I had an offer that we wrote on Monday for um, actually an investor who's my mother. Nice. So good. Have me take care of it. And then I, um, I actually sent one to Jerry this morning um, because I had two from Thursday. I had a customer that I met at the open house that didn't want to act right then. Um, but he called me yesterday and said I want to put an offer in on the home, so I'm waiting for his call this morning. He said he was going to call. It's a cash. On the home that you were sitting in? The home that I was sitting in. And I had another customer on. You guys are way better. I'm telling you that as many bank-owned open houses and stuff that I sat, I rarely, I mean, I'm talking rarely, less than half a percent did I ever sell. And you guys, your percentages are way higher than mine. You guys are obviously better than me. I'm bummed because even though uh, when I called... The uh, asset manager, they said that we could do open houses. Yeah, for, for HUD. And for HUD. Every broker that I've called so far says no. And then to call them and then call the district manager for Florida, yeah. which is Tom Wilson, I think is his name, uh, he doesn't return phone calls. So I haven't been able to get him to call the broker and let him know. But this is the only one. It's Jamie Maloney who's letting me sit this open house. And it's a HUD. So it's a, well, it was a HUD. It it's, switched. Um, oh switched hands but still bank owned okay um but yeah i have i had a customer i had to send over to jerry this morning because he also wants to put an offer on the same home got it so um, okay which is which is great i mean I got two well yeah and now here's the thing you just let's cover that it's not a you're not disallowed from representing two buyers on the same home okay okay you can just say hey look you got to be honest with them say hey look i got two of you i'm sitting you know this is a hot property i got two of you that are interested in this property all right Obviously, I can represent you to the fullest. I cannot, just as, as full warning, I can still be a single agent, but the thing I can't do in this case, because i got to tell you up front, and I'm going to tell them the same thing, I'm going to provide you the, all the same data. You can look at the comps. You can decide what you want to do. Ultimately, decisions is, is yours. I can't even you know, begin to tell you what they're offering, nor will I tell them what you're offering. You just got to put in, if we know we're going to have a multiple offer situation, which I do because i got two people wanting, so there's at least two going in, Put in your highest and best right now and see what happens. And okay. the way I explain, because I did a lot of the HUD properties because they were, you know, we actually had to fill out bid paperwork and all this stuff. And they said, well, what do you think? And I said, you know what? Guys, we know there are going to be more than one offer on this property. All right? It's a sealed bid. We know that. All right? Well, we don't know that, but we're assuming that. So all I can tell you is put in a bid that if you get it and you found out that you lost it by 100 bucks, you're not going to kill yourself. All right? And... Or if you get it and you found out you were the only bid, you're not going to kill yourself, right? Like, Dad, come! I went eight thousand dollars over asking, and I, you know, but it's all based upon the numbers, okay? Because an asking price is just an asking price. We have no idea; it could be way high, way low. You got to put in something you're comfortable with, okay, right? So we can then. Yeah. Absolutely, but you just fully disclosed. Okay. Okay, you just got to tell both parties. Hey, look, you know, I got two people interested, you know, and if they come to you and say, "Well, I'm not going to do it unless you," okay, well then you know what? Let me turn it over to one of my other associates, and we won't, you know. I was under uh, the impression it yeah. was a conflict. Yeah, I, I would, you know, not fully disclosed. It's not because I did it all the time. All right. All right. And by the way, by, by quick story in the HUD properties. This is way back, right? Remember, I told you, we had to fill out these offers. They had these. Uh, they're all on carbon paper. You know what I mean? You know, remember that stuff? C, you know, that's what CC means. By the way, you guys would. You know, a carbon copy. Do you know what that meant? Okay. The CC somebody. Okay. I mean, let me educate you youngsters about what. Okay. So you'd have to fill this out and it would go, you know, in like eight, eight, you know, he had like seven pages of carbon in between because you're filling out eight copies all at once. So you had to press down really hard. And you're filling out these bids, right? And you have to fold them up. And then I had to hand deliver them to the HUD office by uh, 4.30 on Monday because they were opened up on Tuesday mornings, right? And so we couldn't just, you know, it's funny. It's, but you don't know how many times I'm in downtown Tampa because my clients, oh, I can't, you know, we got together at three and I'm filling out all the paperwork. I said, I got to have this in, in downtown Tampa by 4.30 or our bid's not going to get looked at. They, and trust me, 4.30 to a government office means 4.20, okay? <laughs> all right, they're like, coon, coon, shutting it down, all right? 4.30 means I'm in my car on the way home to a government worker, okay? <laughs> so you know how many times it's on Cass Street and I'm just like, feeding a, a machine like eight blocks away because everything's blocked up in traffic and I'm sprinting down the street, you know, I feel like I was like a detective or something, you know what I mean, running uh, in downtown Tampa to get up and beat it in there, like sliding in and getting my uh, bids in. So, um, but, so one time we're there and they're like, what do you think we should bid? I said, well, I don't know if there are any offers. And all of a sudden we're at the house, right? It was in Lake St. George. I remember like it was yesterday. It was in Lake St. George, this little, you know, these little uh, Attached to their like attached villas and these cul-de-sacs where you're like on top of each other. All right, so it's just and all of a sudden in the kitchen sink, I look and there's this crumpled up piece of carbon paper. 
right? So they said, what do you think I should bid? And I said, and folded it. I said, we should bid a dollar more than that, right? <laughs> you, you know, some other idiot agent had filled it out and crumpled it up. It pays don't litter, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> so I did it. And literally, we bid $10 more than that, and we won. Oh. All right? And I could just imagine the steam coming out of the other agent. How in the heck? It's like, hey, you know what? My job is to represent my client. Because <laughs> we were going to bid lower. And I said, well, if you really want it, we know we've got to go at least there. Right? And it ended up being the next highest bid. So, um, funny. Anyway, so just keep doing them, right? Keep sitting them. That's, you know, it doesn't matter. Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday afternoon, whenever you can. All right? And if nobody comes, take work with you and be there doing what you're supposed to be doing anyway. Right? Think open, you're going to have someone come. I know. It doesn't, it's true. Right? People just, you know, and I, so I can't force you to do it. All right. Those are magnets. They are. They, they literally are magnets. Yeah. Uh, so. Just go do it, okay? Just do it. All right, okay? Finish the bridge. I never, I think, you know what? Uh, we, we understand what we mean by stop going bagel to bagel, right? Don't just go to another training, eat a bagel, and then never implement anything, all right? And then what's your schedule for next week? Go to another bagel, all right, and not implement that. I mean, not implement the next training I go to and not implement. Okay, just implement something, all right? Just go whatever it is, all right? And if it's not, if you don't like what I'm t teaching you here, great, fine. Go to something and do it, though. Right? Just, you know, go, go do something. Finish the bridge. That was an old term we used to have. That was an old slide I was copying and pasting from. But um, finish the bridge was my version of, of going bagel to bagel before was agents were, hey, look, I want to get across the river. So they start building the bridge. All right? Because this is the latest, greatest thing. I just learned this one in this seminar. So you start building the bridge and you get about halfway across and you're so, you know, ADD. You're like, oh, I'm tired of this. This is not fun anymore. That seems like too much like work. So let me go back and let me start a new bridge because I went to another, you know, seminar. And now we start building, oh, this is the one. Right? And so this and this and you get, you know, three quarters of the way across and oh, that's not fun anymore. It seems like too much like work, you know, and I stopped doing that because I wanted to be free in charge of my own destiny and I didn't want to work anymore and that didn't, yeah. So I'm going to go back and, and they have all these, you look across at the end of the, month, end of the year, you've got 12 bridges started, none finished, right? Just got, choose one and finish the stinking bridge, right? You have every right to go open, start a new bridge after you've finished one, but don't just go hopping around, okay? Oh, Zillow, I bought the Zillow zip code and I gave it, six months and it's not producing so now you know whatever okay just if that's your choice make an educated decision and stick and go and just make it happen all right and just finish the bridge all right learn develop and play to our strength we talked about this bank owned open hashes slash traffic generating events whatever that may be could be um the uh, uh flea market could be you know tra uh, bank owned open houses it could be uh regular open houses i don't care all right, go where, as long as you're getting eyeball to eyeball with people, all right? It could be, hey, you know what, I like that for sale by owner thing. Let me start knocking on some doors and doing some for sale by owners. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter, right? If you're, at the, you're having slow traffic and you got eyeballs on your, on your bank-owned open house, start knocking on some of the doors around the bank-owned open house, all right? There's no furniture in there you have to worry about protecting, all right? Okay, all right, and me, I had this old little, like, uh, uh, this thing served me for about eight years. It was solid. I had to replace the, the canvas every once. It was one of those uh, kind of like director's chairs, those wood director chairs, you know what I mean, that had the canvas seat and the canvas back. And about every five years, I'd have to replace the canvas because my, you know, sitting in the bank on open house without any uh, air conditioning in July it tended to get a little sweaty, you know what I mean? So um, I had to keep moving around. You got a story about that? Well, the <laughs> house I've been sitting in has had no AC, and so yeah. upstairs was 102 degrees. Nice. And then downstairs was about 90 degrees, but it didn't have electric, so I had three fans going. Uh -huh. But by the time you lay out all your signs, you know, it's mm -hmm. about, you know, 3 o'clock in the afternoon is when I was doing that open house on right. Thursday, and it works great, 3 to 6, doing a bank of, but, Right. Uh, I was drenched completely, and so when anyone would come in, I'd grab my paper towels and yeah, my hands off exactly. and use some... some uh, people love that, though, guys. I'm telling you. People are like... Holy smoke, man. Most realtors I know want to jingle their Rolex, I mean, all right? And you're just sweating this freaking, you know, behemoth of a heat bomb, all right? Saying, man, I, you know what? It's a sign to them that you're a hard worker. The question I kept getting over and over, you're not the listing agent? Yeah. You're not the listing agent? No. No. Yeah. See? Isn't it great? Because now I can represent you 100%, right? 100%. Well, I can represent you. question that you have to answer. So you have your own list of foreclosures that you have those listings? 
No, yeah. I have an MLS. Yeah. Right, I have, yeah, exactly. Okay, who does it matter? Matter of fact, I prefer not to sell my own listings because then I can represent you exclusively as the buyer's agent. What's great about the whole Plus, I don't have any listings, but I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> All right? <laughs> the first thing I do to everyone, I'm like, look, I'm not a listing agent, so I can represent you fully. Let's walk right. out back real quick. The stucco's falling off. Yeah, right. The second floor because there's so much problems with the house, the moisture and everything. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, I said there's probably mildew behind that and there's some other things. Right. So, but there are other homes available in the neighborhood. But look through this one see what you like. And I yeah. actually got two customers I'm working with now from the last open home to try to find them something in, in water, uh, was it water crest or whatever, right across the street from South Fork and Riverview. So, I mean, it works. Yeah. Just... They like the fact, oh, wow, you're not trying to force me into something or hide anything from me or anything like that, right? Not that we would anyway, but, you know, that buyers are skeptical. They're taught buyer beware, right? You know, and so they're just naturally skeptical. Well, they ask you what else is wrong with the house since you've been sitting there. And yeah. Like, well, that window's probably going to need to be replaced. So yeah. Try to open it and the window falls out. You know? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> See? Like other things, but I really recommend probably an engineer and a, and a, you know, a home inspector when you go to, if you want to put an offering on this house so you right. don't waste your money. Yeah. And and there, I had one lady argue with me that they were asking way too much, and I kept agreeing with her, and she kept getting angry. <laughs> I'm just four thousand. What they're asking for? I'm like, yes, ma'am. I go. It's ridiculous. <laughs> That's you know, exactly. Steal it from you. I can't believe. What is the mark? This is the market value. Seventy-five thousand. I said, ma'am, I am on your side. <laughs> You're right. How many times can I say I agree yeah. that it's funny and it's so true? It's because, you know, and they're going to come in with this mentality that you're supposed to, they're the, you're there to defend the value. And you're like, hey, I didn't set the value, right? And quite frankly, even now when I list the homes, so hey, look, I, I didn't set the value, all right? They didn't pay attention to my BPO, all right? Okay, <laughs> they went with somebody else's and that's their choice. But, you know, that's, you know, it is what it is. So, fair enough. I'm just telling you guys, when you start to go do them, they become real fun. Because you just have fun with people, right? You're sweating. You're, you know, uh, it's a totally different atmosphere. It's a total non, no pressure. Because the other regular bank, I mean, the regular open houses I get, because I go and I visit them when I go to meet agents. Like when I go to Orlando, I, I go to, sometimes I'll stay over a weekend and I'll go and visit open houses. Why? Because I want to introduce me to agents. I'm going to get eyeball to eyeball with agents, right? So I can tell them about future home. We're now in town and yada, 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 right? But, you know, the whole idea of, I sit there and we have and I would get little cookies and everything. I get it, all right. But that's so. It's done, right? And they're going, you know, because the clients are going from cookie to cookie. You're going from bagel to bagel. They're going from cookie to cookie, and it's just, you know, they what I mean. They don't eat the cookies. The kids do if they have. Oh yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, that's come from your Publix days, right? Now, what a genius, by the way. Whoever dis did idea it was at Publix to start giving away free cookies to kids was a genius. Right? Okay. It's um, wonderful to do. So. Um, anyway, so just, you know, just go have fun with them. I'm telling you, it's a totally different atmosphere, right? Cause you, and you have every right to go in in shorts and, you know, and, and just be hanging out because, yeah, exactly. It's just the way we roll, right? It's, you know, it is what it is. All right, convert walk-in traffic. You just get really good at that. I mean, how, you just win them over. Hey, look, this place is falling apart. I wouldn't buy this thing for, you know, 100000 much less 204 all right? So let me go find something that works, right? Unless that's what you're looking for. <laughs> Now, what are you looking for? Let's make an offer. Who knows, right? Put in an offer and see what they say, right? Pick up a buyer, and you still got a cash buyer working later. Become really good with investors, right? These guys are just, hey, look, they're spreadsheet guys and gals, spreadsheet-oriented, all right? We're going to talk about that in a second because we're going to cover the part where we talk about the disk profile today, all right, and how you sell differently to different people, all right? And it's, uh, uh, work first-time home buyers with Vigor because that's a lot of fun. And then uh, we just order, take our listings, kind of like with the for sale by owner. All right, we want people saying, come list my home. Put your sign in my yard now. All right, okay, if you insist, I will, right? I just, it works. I, about literally 70%, if I hadn't sold the home or the home had not sold in, in within about six weeks, I was usually listing that home, more times than not listing that for sale by owner. I'd already proven, I'd already given massive value on the front side. I was already telling them, hey, look, you know what I mean? And, and, it was just a, a, a better way to go for me, all right, uh, to make that happen. Okay, so we're going to cover this in the book. You guys can go back and, and reflect. Remember, the pages that I have are, are out of, when I reference a page, it's out of this book. So if you have a different book, just find it, okay? Um, it may or may not be the same. Um, okay, so the DISC profile. Real quickly, you guys understand the DISC profile, D-I-S-C, different personality types and all that kind of stuff. 
Here's my, my problem. When I first learned disk profile way back in the day, um, my problem with disk profile was uh, it, it wasn't, I, the book does a better job of it than anything I've ever seen of actually teaching you how to actually use that. Before, every time I already reached it, it was all about me. Like, hey, what personality am I? Right? And then everybody I met was just using that as an excuse to have bad behavior. Oh, I'm real forgetful. I just, you know, I'm sorry I didn't show up to our appointment because I'm a high eye. Okay, well, that doesn't give you an excuse to be rude, right? You know what I mean? That's rude not to show up to an appointment, right? Or, you know, it's just, oh, it's just the way I am, you know, right? It's just, oh, that's, my, yeah, that's my personality type. Well, A, if I'm going to do that, I need to learn that, hey, those are, there's a lot of weaknesses associated with being a high eye, and I need to work on those a little bit, okay? I need to temper some of that and, and make it a little better. Fair enough, okay? The book does a good job because it's talking about ultimately this at the end, what he calls the platinum rule, which is great. We all know the golden rule, right? Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. All right, the platinum rule is do unto others as they would have done unto them. And that's actually thinking it a step further, right? It's like, hey, look, I'm not going to treat everybody the way I want to be treated because I'm a high I, all right? And if I go treat a C the way I want to be treated, they're going to say, whatever, dude, you know what I mean? Okay, get your stuff together and give me a spreadsheet. All right, I'm like, spreadsheet? That's not party. That doesn't sound like fun. Okay, that's not nearly enough, you know, human interaction for me, all right, okay? I crave human interaction, not spreadsheet interaction, so what are we going to do? But, and he does a good job in the book, go back and reread this section, he does a good job in the book because one of his assignments, he says, okay, Rick, you just found the perfect home for a D, all right? Tell me what you, how, you're going to make a phone call and tell him, okay, you just found the perfect home, so go, right? And so I think he does a great job, like, it's like something like this, um, for a high D, straight to the point, they don't want to mess around. I don't have, I want to be done in 12, 15 seconds at the most. All right? So, uh, high D, all right? Hey, Jim, just found the perfect home for you. We got to jump on it right away. Here's the address. Check it out. I just sent you an email uh, with all the details. Boom. Out. Okay? Hi, I. Hey, Jim, I just found it. Dude, this home is on a cul-de-sac. Can you imagine? We're going to show you. There's only seven homes in the whole cul-de-sac, and you're at the end of it. All right? We're going to, I can just imagine the raging keggers we're going to have. We're going to shut the street down at the one end. I'm not worried about through traffic. We'll just shut the place down. You've got kids. I can already imagine that we're going to sit there and we're going to paint bases on the street. Okay, I can imagine home plate there and we're going to have massive kickball games. In the, you know what I mean? It's just going to be a raging party 24-7. All right? That's to the high I. The high S, right? They want steady, nurturing. Hey, Jim, I know how important all right, safety is for you. This home, gated community, end of a cul-de-sac, no through traffic. You have to worry about your kids playing outside on their own, all right? Okay, I'm telling you, this is the home, man, because it is going to be perfect. You don't have to worry about them. Gated, everything, it's perfect, just what you're looking for, right? And then, let's see. Hey, Jim, dude, I just found the home for you. I just emailed you a spreadsheet on it. Guess what? They're asking one thirteen eighty two a square foot. And that is 47 cents below per square foot anything else that's sold in the neighborhood in the last six months. All right? I know you, you probably just can barely contain yourself because we're going to get something 47 cents a square foot left. I mean, but that's what, a high, high, you know, that's what they want. So you give them what you want, right? And so you got to think and know people to say, hey, how come they weren't excited about the keg party? Because right? he's like, dude, where's my spreadsheet? All right? And the spreadsheet, you know, all of a sudden I send the spreadsheet guy to the keg. We're like, whatever, dude. Okay, well, tell me about the party, right? Okay? And so you just got to give people what they want. He does a really good job of doing that, all right? So that's the whole, utilize it that way, all right? Don't utilize it to make an excuse for your own actions, okay? I'm, hey, I'm a high, I'm just a, I'm a, a C or a D, so I can be rude to people. That's what Ds are famous for. Oh, I'm just a high D, so I'm an a-hole, okay? That's what you get a lot, all right? I'm a high eye, so I'm just totally flitty and don't even care about people's schedules. And hey, as <laughs> long as we have fun and I smile when I show up 20 minutes late, at least you're going to like me. <laughs> all right? All right? No. All right? To, a, to somebody that's structured, they're freaking out. All right? Okay? One o'clock means one o'clock. Doesn't mean one freaking 20. Right? Okay? And so it's just you got to realize how people are. All right? Treat people with a, that. All right. Discovery quote. This kind of care. This is kind of cool. Care like everyone is an S. All right? Smile like everyone's an I, prepare like everyone's a C, and sell like everyone's a D. It's like, you know what, flitty, floaty, just team the bottom line. That's what a D wants to know, all right? So give it to them, right? If that's what they want to know, great, okay? Just 
Save you a lot of time, by the way. Work with some Ds. There's nothing wrong with it. They might be rude, but at least they're going to sign it. Okay? And they'll sign it now. They're not going to wait around. Okay? Get things done. All right. Spectrum of Solutions. We spent a little bit of time on this. What's a, do you guys remember the Spectrum of Solutions? What is it? It's a brochure. Okay? It's a fancy word for what we used to call a brochure. You gotta have a, you know, the, back in the day, we had a little trifold brochure about us or a card you know, thing. It's, you know what? Here's the... The, the whole gist behind having one of these, and I suggest you have one. If you're going to sit some of these open houses, you want to have people to leave with some type of takeaway. It could be an electronic version, but not everybody's going to be electronically inclined, right? So you can send them an electronic version of it if you want. But then also I suggest that you begin to th uh, formulate what, the, and by the way, we'll talk about there's a spot on, on the, their website, on the 7L website, where you can see some samples of some. It's just a, a spectrum of solutions, things that I do. It's things that you do for a client, and also some of it is things you have done for clients, right? So some success stories are built in there. But remember this. Hey, I didn't know you could help me buy a brand new home at Lennar. <laughs> sorry about that, Daniel. I'm like, sorry. All right. Sorry, Shmari. 250 times 3% is 7,500 stinking dollars. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I need a buyer's agent to buy a new house. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Well, but, but it's not their fault if they don't know. Whose fault is it if they don't know? It's our fault, right? We've got to tell them, here's what I can do. I can help you with for sale by owners. You don't have to drive by those. And you know what I mean? You're feel free. Those are in play. All right? But if you want my help, I've got to help negotiate and all this kind of stuff. I just got to structure on the front side. I just got to get, you know, I got to work it through on the, on the front side. So don't just go knocking on the door. All right? Look, I used to have my buyers scared to death, almost like that, that if they didn't go with my card stapled to their forehead if they walked into a, like a model center that they, somehow I would know and an electric sh shock would happen or something, right? Seriously, I would educate say, hey, look, do not go in there until I've had a chance to call. All right? Well, yeah. Okay. one of the worst people to deal with, too, if they went in there. Well, it's because yeah. they do a lot of average. You can't blame them, man. Whose fault? You know what I mean? I went walking in, all right, and they came. You know how much I pay for the freaking billboards on Bruce B. Downs? All right, it's a lot of money. So when you come, I, part of my model is not to pay you. That's why I have billboards. All right, I mean, you know, and that's, that's their philosophy, and I get it, right? So, and it's not their fault, especially if you know that, then you know what? Either that or go visit the model centers and establish a relationship with the people there. Say, hey, you know what? I got this new thing, all right, it's newfangled, we're sitting on these bank-owned open houses, and I got people, and I got buyers, I'm working with a lot of buyers all of a sudden, right, I'm meeting people out of the woodwork, and as much as I try and corral the kittens, sometimes I can't, right, and I, I educate them, but just, can I have an agreement, man, that you and I have got something that if somebody walks in, at least that they mention my name, call me up, here's my card, all right, I'm going to say, either that or can I have an agreement that if, if I know, I'm just going to call you and say, hey, look, I'm not just going to say, hey, here's a phone book. If these people show up, I get paid, right? Okay. But here's, uh, you know, a list of some people I'm working with. Can I kind of pre-register them now just in case they pop in? Is it worth it to not have a hassle of losing 7500 bucks? Yeah. Plus, you go educate yourself on the market. You understand what their models are, what incentives they're offering, all that kind of, And plus, when you've had a face-to-face -face with these people and you're, you know what I mean, they're a lot more likely to say, hey, you know what? Yeah, Daniel's a good guy, all right? All right, uh, yeah, he told me that he's got working with a lot of people and they wandered in. All right, let me, let me, let me, I'll get this squared away for you, Daniel. You know what I mean? I just, I had that kind of relationship with a lot of people, all right? I really did with the, with the builders just to make sure. Because you can try and crowd them all you can, but sometimes you can't, all right? So, Spectrum so just start to think what that might look like, all right? Some people, like, like Chris, I can see already they have an electronic version of that, and that's cool, right? But there's some people who say, hey, look, you, when, how do I open it? It's, it's, you know, okay, well, here's a full, you know, let me hand you something, too, all right? Give them a reason to keep it, all right? Your grandma wants to put something on her, on her refrigerator, all right? Your friends, all right, that have belly button rings don't want to get something on their refrigerator, okay? So just realize that, okay? So just, you know, and, and learn to sell to the different uh, uh, generational gaps too, right? Okay, what those are, all right? Did I show you? I'm just kidding. <laughs> For my 50th birthday. I'm just kidding. So yesterday, right, Sam, I was flying down. So Samuel comes and gives me a hug, right? But I was taking, I got a chance to, I got to take Samuel to school, but he likes me to hug him before I drop him off, right? So we hug it, you know, I was hugging. So, oh, Dad, you're leaving again. So he's hugging me, and he said, Oh, and his, his, Sam was a little guy, so his head comes right about to here. All right, so he's hugging me. And he said, oh, it's like a little pillow. 
I said, excuse me? I said, that's a rock hard. You should say, ouch, dad, that hurts. So I'm like, the whole time I'm walking into the, into the airport yesterday, like, people are like, what's the matter with that dude? I'm like, eh, clenching my, you know, trying to keep myself all tightened up. It's like, holy smokes, I got some work to do. What's that? I'm doing. I'm still doing 200 uh, push-ups and sit-ups a day, bro. All right. So can you imagine what it'd be like if I wasn't? Holy smoke! Where would it go? All right. I'm like Samuel, dude. That's right. See, man, a boy. All right. So anyway, so think about your spectrum of solutions. There are some examples here. All right. 7lbook.com/resources. And she can't sleep through anything. If she can sleep through me yelling like that, then she's a solid, good girl. All right. 7lbook.com/ There's some samples of uh, um, some spectrum of solutions. Just, you know, give you some ideas, all right? Some things, what that might look like. It's gonna look different for each of us, right? Hey, some of us like to tell more stories. There's gonna be more of your success story. And they, that should be in there, by the way, as well, all right? Uh, then they move on to one-on-one -on -one meetings, okay? We're gonna talk about this, okay? One-on-one -on -one meeting is, okay, uh, meeting somebody at a bank owned open house is not a one-on-one -on -one meeting, okay? A one-on-one -on -one meeting is what Rick and what, uh, what was her name? Michelle did when they met at the, at the uh, restaurant. You don't have to meet at a restaurant. It could be, now here's where we get, remember we talk eyeball to eyeball, all right? One-on-one -on -one meetings, we're talking eyeball, we call it eyeball to eyeball and meatball to meatball, all right? It means you're usually breaking bread with them or having a cup of coffee. It doesn't have to be bread, all right? But just, you know, it doesn't have to be Italian, all right? We just, you know, the whole eyeball, meatball, yeah, it's right. So um, that being said, it's like, and we're sitting across and we're not sitting across so I can at the end say, can I get a referral, right? At the end, you're going to say, how can I help you, right? What's your biggest challenge? You're actually going to actively listen and go, it's a lot of fun. What's your job? Oh, just go have coffee with people. Pretty good gig. How do I get that? How do I sign up for that one, right? Okay, you know, and in my job, I get a coffee break every three hours, right? How do you get where your whole life is a coffee break? All right, well, it's okay. Got to be what it is. Frog, any uh, network marketers out there? Maybe in network marketing? Okay, so Frog is... Um, I don't know what to say to people if I get together. Frog, is just, this has been around for years. They always call it Ford, uh, everything. Family, recreation, occupation, goals, right? Got nothing else to talk about. Hey, how's family, right? Hey, last time we met, you were going to take up skydiving. Okay, whatever, you're right, that's a recreation, or you like to ski, or you, you know, been out on the boat, all right, or whatever it is, right? Family recreation, occupation, hey, how's work going, how's the thing, you were just starting your new gig, you were trying to get out of that, whatever, you was going on, all right, occupation and goals. Hey, last time we thought you were trying to save up because you guys wanted to go to Europe as a family, how's that coming along, have you guys had a chance, Are you make any progress on that? Okay, so just, you know, if you've got nothing else to talk about, think about that, all right, most of us are pretty good with people, all right, but if you get stuck, do that. Um, at the end, what are their biggest challenges right now? Remember where there are goals to give them massive value. Uh, match, this is hard for me, match the pace of conversation, right? So if I'm talking to somebody who's a little slower paced than I am, all right, I've got a really slow, and breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth for me. Okay, just really slow it down. And again, because you're going to overwhelm people if you're like me or underwhelm them. All right, if you're talking to me, I'm like, hey, this is a two-way street. That means you can match as well, all right? How about if I'm at 800 and you're at 100? How about if we meet somewhere in the middle, all right? Okay, let's, let's uh, you know, uh, get going. So match space conversation and end again with how can, how can I help you and or what can I do for you, all right? Not what can you do for me, all right? By the way, now that I paid for your $4 cup of coffee at Starbucks, all right, here's what I'm, I'm at really after a referral, okay? It's not that, what we're doing, all right? Uh, leave with an assignment. By the way, that, that's your, your, when I say find something to do, you want to leave with an assignment. Why? Because you, you want to leave with a reason to follow up, right? Hey, I'm looking for a good masseuse. I'm looking for a good chiropractor. I'm looking for a good ear doctor. I'm looking for a good uh, handyman. I'm looking for a good ballet school for my child. I'm looking for a good uh, preschool for my children. I'm looking for a good ballet or dance recital, whatever. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right, you should leave with an assignment, right? My goal, because it gives you a reason, an assignment gives you a reason to follow up with them. That's the biggest thing. Having a cup of coffee doesn't do you any good if there's not a reason to, hey, look, I mean, you need to follow up, and you know what? Or I was just driving by, and because you're actively listening, right? All of a sudden you drive, another reason just to call, right? Hey, I drove by and I saw this scuba diving store, and when we were talking about recreation, you were talking about wanting to get into it, and I don't know if you knew this is not too far from your home. I just thought I'd let you make you aware of it. I don't know if you saw it. It looks like it just went in. Just a reason to call, right? And they also say that, hey, I heard you. People crave to be heard, right? 
Okay. Yeah. What's that? I did that. Um, it was traffic on one of the main roads. Right. And I knew that this person that I know kind of they drive that way all the time at that time. What a great so idea! I called and I said, "Don't go on 54." Perfect. <laughs> That's like crazy. Nice. See what. Well, See, that's a reason to chat, right? Hey, I was thinking about you. That's kind, right? Mm -hmm. That's a kind. About her I right? No, no, no. And you were just being kind. And you know what? When you're kind, good things happen. All right? It's just people reciprocate that. That's awesome. That's a great idea. You know? It really is. It's just it's an amazing thing. Once you, once you start and it becomes a habit, like I'm looking for ways to be kind, all right? Mm -hmm. The whole random acts of kindness, you know, gig or whatever. Just go do that. That's a, what a great thing. That's awesome. That's very, very cool. Um, F-bomb just means follow-up, okay? All right, F-bomb means some other things around me, okay? It means Friday, right? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, you know, <laughs> Friday. Um, but uh, just, you know, don't be afraid to follow up, right? It's, uh, you know, it's not following up saying, hey, look, I haven't had any referrals from you after our coffee. Okay, that's not the reason for your follow-up, right? Follow-up is, hey, look, I, I was supposed to get this for you. He talks in the book, and you can think about this or not. If you really want to get motivated, there's a seven-week series that he talks about of note cards, emails, uh, direct mail, phone calls. That's how you're touching that sphere. Once we start to pare down that, that group of 150, how are we going to touch these, and what do we do with our, uh, with our database once we have them? Then he starts talking about this series of people and how you stay in touch without them feeling like you're bombarding them, and it feels, you know what I mean, that, that kind of thing. You know, the cool thing about this is that <clears throat> if uh, note cards are included in that, all right, let's say you did four note cards a year to your database, all right, one a quarter, you can bombard them with emails and other direct, all this other stuff, and they're not going to feel like you're bombarding them because they get one note, a uh, personal handwritten note. That overcomes, all, you know, and combine that with a phone call once a quarter as well, now you're a friend. You're not a marketer. You're a pal. Right, and so it's it's easy, right? I'm just telling you. Uh, I think in the book they talk about that one because people are he's hesitant about making calls to people he hadn't talked to in a while. And I said, you know what? One one phone call will overcome 18 months of perceived indifference on your part. They forget about that. Hey, man, I appreciate. It. Thanks for calling, and thanks for calling, not asking for a referral, right? <laughs> okay, and just you know, just call, thanks for calling. Let me know that there's traffic on 54. That was very kind of you, all right? You just go be kind and good things happen, right? It's that generosity cycle. Um, use success stories in your email and your direct mail, because that's where you're gonna tell stories about, that people like stories, right? When you are, uh, why do we like the book so much? Because it's a story, right? It's, it's a lot easier to read because it's a story. Why do, we, um, why do I like historical fiction so much? Because I'm being tricked into learning history. Right? Okay? Because I'm, I'm engaged in the, in, the, in the people that are there, right? Instead of just reading a history book and they memorize this date and the other. If you start to tell stories about history, now it becomes alive, right? Now you can, you know, you can picture yourself there and all that kind of stuff. Do that same thing. Hey, man, you know, I remember when I bought my first home. Hey, I just met this little sweet little girl that just started working at our little place and they're renting. And you know what? She'd be perfect. You know, you guys, you should, let me hook you guys up. Right? They're not, but those kind of stories trigger those memories, right? And get things going, all right? Never use the term referral, all right? Instead, we don't talk about referrals. We talk about connections, all right? And hey, hey man, can you, can you introduce me to somebody? You know, it's, um, uh, and I don't, this is probably later in the book. Remember he talks about the reticular activation system? Remember that part where it's, uh, it, that's the thing where, hey, look, you know what? I, I, I decided I want a blue Ford F-150, right? And now all I see, as soon as I decide that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I've looked at one at the, at the dealership or even looked online, now everywhere on the, every time I'm driving, I see nothing but Ford F-150s, all right, blue in particular, right? Okay, they're just there, right? What's that? No, it's in your brain. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually there. It's, it's, it's physiologically proven. Yeah, what's that? I think it's the amygdala. Okay, I, I, we'll go with that, all right? 100% sure. Amygdala. Say that eight times fast, all right? Um, and be careful. You might end up, you know, getting suspended from school if you said that eight times fast and mis mispronounced something. Um, with that in mind, uh, I would, you know, it's funny because before I knew this, I knew it was amygdala and reticular activation system, I learned this pretty quickly. So what I would have discussions with my clients to say, as we're driving around, hey, let's go look at the next house. 
So, hey guys, you know what? By the way, we've been working together about a week and a half now, and then we're starting to see some stuff, and, and we're, we're close to writing an offer. By the way, I was speaking that into existence. All right? We're close to writing an offer. I think we've narrowed it down, right? I'm nodding, right? Giving all the pause. We're, we think we've narrowed it down to at least two or three homes that we, you know, we, can, we can really hammer it down to. I said, what's kind of funny? You know what's funny? You ever, and I would use these examples again before I read the book. I said, you ever, you know, been like, all of a sudden, now you're pregnant, and now all you see are pregnant people. You know what I mean? Just see, get, get, there's something in our brains that really keep us attuned. I said, the funny thing is I've learned that a lot of my uh, people that I'm, that I'm working with is that um, now that they're in the process of buying, now all of a sudden they hear other people that are thinking about doing it. All right? It's kind of, and a lot of people, and I would speak this, so a lot of people refer me a lot of business. And I said the R word because I didn't know I was not supposed to at the time. All right? But I said a lot of people refer other, their friends and family to me just because now they're here. And I said, it's kind of funny, like, I said, I, an example that it, uh, a couple could be standing in the grocery line and the person behind them says, boy, I really need a good realtor, right? And they wouldn't even hear it, all right? But now they're in the process. Somebody whispers the word real estate four aisles over, and you're like, oh, what was that? Right? And you go wheeling over the, hey, you got to call my friend Chris. Right? It's just, you know, that's the way it is. And so I, I was planting that seed in their mind. Right? Hey, look, now that I've, sh I've shown you, I've earned the right. Okay? I've shown you how hard I'm going to work. All right? Now I've earned the right to be introduced or connected with some of your friends that are in similar situations. It's not, I remember we brought Michael in, right? Michael Mayer. And we brought, brought him in to do a, a seminar. And the first time we came to the seminar, he said, hey, look, what's going to happen is this. Because the generosity cycle is once you start doing it. He doesn't say it in the book. He said, you, people are just going to flat out. Sometimes they're going to say, man, uh, you know what? Jim, you have hooked me up, dude. All right? You've taken really good care of me. What can I do for you? And you know what Michael says? The answer is, refer me. And I said, oh! You said the R word, right? Okay, you're not allowed to say it. He goes, absolutely you are when they have said, what can I do for you? Right now, you can say introduce me or hook me up or you know, you know, connect me with, but if, if it, they're going to connect better with the R word, then say the R word because they've asked. They've opened the door. It's not you asking for the referral. They're saying, hey, man, you've given so much massive value to me. What can I do? Right? Say it. Refer me. All right? Okay? Little, you know, uh, what's her name again? Hang on. Yeah, uh, Allie. Allie. I knew it was Allie Cat. I was going to remember Allie Cat. Okay. Um, little Allie needs to, she's hungry. She needs to eat. Right? Refer the heck out of me. All right? Seriously. Right? I would just, and, and do that kind of stuff. All right? So, again, but until that time, you can seek, if you want to use it, re retrain yourself. But don't be afraid to use the R word. All right? Just don't use it on the front side. Okay? All right? Earn the right to, to, to do it. All right. So, everybody good with that? Go be back and reread that section. The disk profile, one-on-one -on -one meetings, and a little bit on spectrum of solutions. Okay? And I think they cover also in that coaching session the idea of when we can start to get connections, right? You start to plant the seed early on. Hey, look, you know what? Okay, we, you know, you can introduce me to some other people. I'm gonna treat them the same way I treated you and fairly and honestly and all that kind of stuff. Cool? All right. So, we had the committed. Remember last time we did not have um, there really isn't anything to, to, to uh, uh, write down because we, there weren't, weren't choices, right? I, I, this was a dictatorship. I told you what you had to do, right? Okay, there, there was no, no options. And how'd you do, uh, Thor wants to know. Well, because Allie still... Like Hamas. <laughs> That's right. Holy smokes. Good point. You're right. All right. So, yeah, exactly. Or at least a patriot, if nothing else, right? Exactly. Come on. Yeah, anti Israel son of a. All right. Okay. No, just kidding. All right, so um, it is not Hamas. That is Hama, right? And, it's, uh, and this, that's the plural of Hama, all right? So it's not Hamas. I feel bad for Orlando and Jacksonville because they're probably like, yeah, what in the heck? What are they going on? No, we 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 educate people on these. We we they they catch on quick, all right. They don't catch on quick. They just don't come back next time. So that's all right. Okay. So we got hammers and cockamamies. All right. 
All right, so here are the things. We're supposed to time block one day each week. This is a, a, a private group, so you're allowed to say, hey, man, you know, I'm struggling a little bit right now. Where's Brian? Brian's not here, and he was uh, struggling the, and, and was asking why, how he's not getting a lot of traffic to his open houses, right? He was, and so put that kind of stuff out there, man. There's some great, hey, look, here's some ideas. Maybe use more signs. Maybe not, you know, there, and so that kind of stuff, give it a shot. Maybe use bank foreclosure because I think he's sitting more regular open houses and not having the quite success, and so try a bank owned and, and, and see what happens, but, but put those out, Okay. So how many, anybody that was not here last time, so didn't have the, uh, everybody was good. I know, Chris, you were at the night session, so they said to say hi to you, by the way, last night. Okay, they were all good. All right, so um, I'm going to start here. So we had time block one day each week. How do yes. you do? Good. All right, good. Hammer. All right, four rituals. The four rituals, I started the ritual about mm -hmm. the, uh, when you go wind down at the end of the pre -leave. night. Pre-leave, uh-huh. Or the, the, the pre-leave or the pre-sleep? Sleep. Okay, you know what? Last night, I'll just a quick aside. That was the one ritual everybody was struggling with. Um, they said, "Hey, look, I, I can time block in the morning. I can do my affirmations. I can do my blessings. I, I like the idea of doing the you know, just one time. I had to do the uh, pre-leave, and I like the idea of making my first and ten for the next day and all that kind of stuff. But the pre-sleep seemed to be one that everybody was was struggling with. So you're not alone if that's okay. So what I, was, what I started doing, I read the book. Yeah. And every night I've been reading, you know, one of the scrolls. Oh, perfect. Every night. That's great. That's a great thing because the scrolls are very, I mean, have you guys, how many guys read the book? Okay. The scrolls are powerful, guys. You know, what, what are they doing there? It's all mindset, right? They're just working on the mind. That's the greatest salesman in the world is not the silver tongue dude, all right? It's the guy that's created in his mind the I will act now, all right? I will persist until I win. You know what I mean? It's all those things. Are, it's just the mindset. Quick story, I think I told this last session, I don't know if you guys, some of you were here, some of you weren't. So, um, Norman Vincent Peale, I'm a big, Norman Vincent Peale wrote Power of Positive Thinking and all these uh, other books back in the early 50s or mid 50s to all through until he died and, and he was 90 something years old, all right? Uh, incredibly powerful, uh, gifted writer, right? And, and just uh, understood the power of the mind, right? Um, he tells a story about, uh, he was in Hong Kong, right? And walking around, his wife, he, again, you got to realize this is written in the 1960s, so his wife was dress shopping or something. You know how that, it was, you know, you can picture the 1960s early. So his wife was dress shopping, so he was wandering around some of the back streets of Hong Kong, and he wandered in a, hot, a, a tattoo parlor, right? He goes in this tattoo, and on the window of the tattoo parlor, outside, it had all the different things that you could, you know, suggestions like templates, if you will, of tattoos you can get. And one of them was Born to Lose. And so this, again, Peel, having written Power of Positive Thinking, right, he said, you know, that didn't sit well with his soul. So he, he walked in and just in their limited communication skills, because this guy spoke mostly Chinese, and, and he said, hey, I've got to ask you about basically the born to lose. Is it, do people really choose to have born to lose tattooed on their arm or on their chest? And the, he said the owner of the shop in his broken English said, must understand before tattoo on chest, tattoo on mind. Mm -hmm. So if he believes that in his soul of souls, in his heart of hearts, in his mind of minds, that he was born to lose, then that's easily you can see why somebody would get that on his, you know, tattooed on them. All right? Speaking of tattoos, Kevin gave me a card yesterday, and on there there was a 50, you know, it was a 50 card, and so on the, it had a tattoo that I can't put on. I haven't, uh, let me show you. Just kidding, I did. All right. This one is a temporary tattoo, all right? So it's not antique. I'm now a mantique, all right? <laughs> all right, so I could <laughs> put that on. So uh, kind of funny. All right, so, but yeah, so, so the scrolls are designed, and what a great idea. That's a, that's a fantastic idea to read those before, all right? We're going to talk about the scrolls at the end again because I'm going to have a challenge for you. Again, this is extracurricular, extra credit for those who want to do it, all right? With me, that's something that I've been meaning to do, and I'm going to challenge myself to do, all right, and, and do that. So, all right? Um, okay, good. Good job. Um, four rituals, I mean, uh, morning ritual, no problem. Morning rituals, I, yeah, I yeah, Perfect. Uh, Time blocking was fine. Close the store at 5 o'clock. Good, good, like awesome. That. That's perfect. You have every right to do so. Did you time block one day each week? One day. Okay, perfect. All right, good. 
And you read the book, right? And continue to read, reread those things. I didn't share any successes on Facebook. That's okay. But I got somebody to uh, lower the price on their listing. Nice, good. That's a, a good deal. Perfect. Good job. We'll give you a hammer on that. Hammer. All right. Good deal. All right. Sandy. Um, I did time block it one day. Um, good. Struggling with the four rituals, I struggled with the Sunday ritual. Um, Cockamamie. Yeah. I'm telling you, that is an important one, guys. Okay, get, find a way to get that done. Okay? I, it, just have a rough road map. Okay? Now, remember, we also have to do it now. Uh, one thing I love about Scroll 9, okay? Scroll 9 is, is uh, I Will Act Now, right? In the, you, People that are gifted, like Og Mandino, the, the author of the book, when he writes things like this that says, no map no matter how carefully intricate and designed can lead somebody to its destination unless the holder of the map actually takes a step, right? Now, I could say, hey, just go do it, right? Don't stop, stop planning all the time and, and actually do something, right? But to word it like that, I would never have thought. But to say, you know what, I got this really cool map. Okay, well, have you taken a step on the, de on the journey? Oh uh, no, but I got a really cool map, right? And there's two parts to it. So just having a plan doesn't isn't the only thing that does it. It's having a map and taking the steps, all right? So, but taking the steps without having a map is not real sensical either, right? Just wandering through our day without a destination in mind, right? And that's what a Sunday night ritual does. So I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna highly encourage you to 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 really struggle with that one and, and, and force yourself to make it happen. Share it with your accountability partner and tell them, hey, look, you have every right to wrap me on the knuckles like the nuns did in my school or whatever, all right, to just make sure I got it done, okay? It's a powerful one. All right, good, but that's honest, and I appreciate that, okay? So, um, pre-sleep? Um. Okay, remember, that, that just means meditation, prayer, whatever, reflection, whatever you want to do, all right? Could be, you know what, just calm the mind down. You're going to sleep better when you get your stuff. First of all, if you've done your first and tens, Remember, that was the other goal, is get that off your mind and onto paper, right? Off your mind, onto paper is very helpful because once it's there, that allows you to free yourself to close the shop, lock the door, all right? And I'll be open for business again tomorrow, okay? I'm increasing by 10, I already start. I already good. Start, I always play with it. Perfect. So good. It, awesome. Good. And that's all I'm asking you to do, and that's yeah, perfect. In the pre-leave, I did implement that. Good. A lot. Okay, um, good. And so, awesome. And then as far as the book, I did buy the book. I just haven't read it yet. Okay, cockamamie, but that's all right. Okay, that's all right. That's a better start, all right, than not having done it. All right, but I'm telling you guys, these books are easy to read. I'm not giving you, you know, Moby Dick. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, you listen to it. Maybe get it on tape. There's on YouTube. You can probably download an audio version on it, you know, while you're doing your workouts and, and all that kind of stuff. Just listen to it while you go. All right, cool. All right, uh, book, book, book. Okay, good. Awesome. Good. Um, I've done three rituals. Nice. Which one are you missing? Um, pre-leave. Okay. Gotcha. Fair enough. Um, Just. And on Sundays, I do not plan my outfits for the week because <laughs> that's impossible. I right. need to buy dresses or something. Okay. Um, but I do plan my workout clothes. That's good. So that helps. Perfect. Well, you know what? It's happening. And you know what? That's kind of, that's to the nth degree, right? Planning your, that's probably like advanced. That's like uh Sunday night ritual, you know, that's an MBA. That, that's a master's in Sunday night rituals when you start planning your, you know, just having, having a Sunday night ritual is all I'm asking for. And you got started with that, so that's great. <laughs> and the pre-leave, you know what, just try and do it one or two times this next session, all right? Okay. Just try and see how, and how it makes you feel the next time when you have, I'm telling you, and the most important part of that is the first and 10 for the next day. Two-part reason, remember, out of your mind, onto paper, so you can actually close shop. And then, okay, good. Okay. Well, see, that's the most important thing about about the pre-leave ritual, in my opinion, is the first and ten for the next day. I definitely. Perfect. So then you got you got a better grade than you thought. Great. We'll give you a hammer. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Did you read the book? Yes. Okay. Good. Good job. I did this time blocking. Nice. Um, and most of the rituals I'm good with. I do the Sunday night. I've been doing that one for a long time. Good. Yeah, hey, look, I got to be a parent night on this. You got to I mean, all this, you got to have a game, you know. <laughs> the morning ritual I got, um, yeah. I read The Miracle Morning. So nice. I to Who else read, someone else read that. By the way, that's Michael's follow-up book is um, uh, Michael, along with a couple other authors, wrote, and, and, and I haven't read that myself, so I need to read that. They have it on Audible. Oh, good, yeah. I listen to a lot of books when I'm out. Cool. Are, like, property, 
Nice. Normally, like, have the clients with you. Sure. Meet them there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they actually have Miracle Morning for real estate agents. Ah, perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, so, yeah, I do that. And then the pre lead is the most challenging one for mm -hmm. me, um, mainly because I still work after I pick my kids up from school. I have to pick them up around three. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still doing stuff. And a lot yeah. of times I don't have like a set. Like it's ending time. time. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know if that you have to have like, hey, I, you know, punch out at five, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, when, again, the pre-leave, the biggest thing for a pre-leave is the first and 10 for the next day. Okay, once I'm ready to shut it, and because that allows me to be fully engaged as a mom or whatever I'm supposed to do at this point now, and uh, taking off realtor hat, putting on mom hat and, you know, or whatever hat I'm supposed to wear and, and go from there. I think one of my biggest problems is like when a client will text me or I have to <clears throat> work on something, I feel the need to text them back or call them back like yeah. relatively quickly. And, and I understand that, but you also can set some parameters around that too. Say, hey, look, you know what? I got your text. I can get back to you tomorrow. I'll check on it. I'll get back to you. Right. All right. Um, I do it with the agents all the time. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I'll, you know what? I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. All right. You're ready to roll. So just quick. I think Jim has it even it's one of your pre. Uh, if you, I, Jim does this to me all the time. I call Jim and all of a sudden I don't get him, but I get a text back right away. It's one of those prefab oh, texts yeah. that says, I'm in a meeting right now. And I'm like, hey, dude, you're in a meeting. Sign up a new agent. Let, far be it from me to stand in your way. You go, all right? Do what you're supposed to do. All right? Same thing to me. I feel hurt every time. Yeah. <laughs> me? Too bad. Feel hurt all you want. Too bad. We're signing, he's signing up new agents. That's all I care about. All right? Okay, so he's getting it done. Yeah, it is, <laughs> Get card back. That's, exactly. All right, you're not, but you can't take my fusion bottle back. No way. That's mine. All right, lost the bow. Okay, good. Good job then. Awesome. Oh, you read the book. Oh, you had your Miracle Morning. You said you read. Sorry. Thanks. Perfect. Daniel. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've done the time blocking for two days. Good. Uh, Monday, the time block did not go as planned because it, it we were in the middle of uh, technical issues with, with devices, but. Um, but no, yeah, that, that works fairly great. I know um, I work from home, so I have two dogs that need to go out. And mm -hmm. so I schedule it. And they're all the time going by the door. <laughs> so I've gotten them on a schedule now where I take them out at 8.30 um, in the morning. Um, I take them out at uh, 2.30 and let them run for a little bit. And then I take them again Perfect. at about 10 o'clock at night. Nice. Run out, so it works great. But, um, you know, and they like schedules too, by the way. They dogs do. They, do. They, they do. They love schedules. Yeah. Um, but th that works great for them and also customers. I can schedule things around that. And um, me and my wife are down to one car right now because uh, my car broke on the way to open house. Very good. So Perfect. That's motivator right there. Time blocking. Um, you know, it helps me to know that I need to get up and have everything ready so I can drive her to her job and pick her up at five. So that's been great. Uh, the rituals I do, um, the night ritual, believe it or not, is the one that I have the hardest with because. Um, I, I don't, I do pray. Yeah. You know, and I do think about That's it. That's good. It's not that I'm focusing on saying, okay, this is my night ritual. My, yeah. I believe to veg out, I watch community. Yeah. On Hulu. That's okay. Funny. That's what I do to veg out. Okay. Um, but, uh, that, um, has been good. And then I have read The Greatest Salesman and I'm reread the scrolls. Good. Um, and then I have not shared the success stories on our face group, our Facebook group page on 100K. Right. But I do share them on my personal page. When Perfect. I have them, so. That's fine. Do me a favor, and, and if you have some good success stories or met some people, you pop it in just because everybody needs to hear. People need to, they get motivated by hearing, hey, you know what? They're doing it, and I need to do it. Well, okay? Just from the first and 10, um, doing that kind of that morning ritual uh, there, the, uh, I, I've gotten three customers that are going through a pre approval process right now with a mortgage broker. And then, um, you know, and, and it, it's really helped out uh, for me for doing those contacts from the previous day before when you have an open house. Um, they're a shop that I call them back that quick. Typically, mm -hmm. I'll wait until the afternoon, but when they get a call in the morning, it's on the forefront of their mind because they left you around 6 o'clock that night, mm -hmm. and it really it really helps. With, so right now, I'm working with about six people, which is great. That's Just in awesome. the past week, I had one person I was working with. Now I got five more on top of it. So. And these are people you didn't know a week ago, roughly, uh, right? Four of them, though. Yeah. And then another one pops out of nowhere because activity breeds activity, right? And so all of a sudden now, I'm just telling you guys, I mean, well, I'm tired of telling you. So, okay. All right. Good job. Awesome. Um, well done. Give you a hammer on that. Hammer. All right. Okay. Um, I listened to the book. Good. That's good. I did both of the, I did the time blocking. 
good, good. And I did, I did the Sunday just like she does with right. kids. Right, okay, right, it's a necessity. I guess, um, yeah. And the pre-leave, it's worked so much for me. Awesome, good, it's, it's been helpful. Much better. Good. That's right, and it gives you permission to shut the door, right? Yeah. Okay, I mean, that's no, there's nothing wrong. By the way, the other thing about time blocking <clears throat> that I discovered, and then we were talking about it last night, is when you properly time block and you do Sunday night ritual, it gives you the, it starts to, to tell you, you know what, I need to say no to some things, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's funny, I was listening to a, um, uh, we're going to a church, and, and uh, church is great, the boys love the, the youth group, we're not so, I mean, so we're going to a small group during while, while we're supposed to go into church. And, but, and so there are other pastors we like to listen to better. So I listen to these uh, sermons, basically like I listened to one this morning when I was on the elliptical, right? It's amazing, you know, technology. So I was listening to, um, and I was listening to one the uh, last week that actually the, the, the youth pastor was sitting in for the, for the main pastor. And he was a pretty funny guy because youth pastors are generally pretty funny guys, right? And they have to be funny if they're going to engage, you know, youth, right? So he's a pretty funny guy. And he was talking about how we, you know, put guilt on ourselves and how we can allow ourselves to, you know, live under this spirit of guilt, right? And that, that all of a sudden, I'm not good enough. I'm, and there's, there's kid guilt, there's dad guilt, there's mom guilt. And it's funny when he was talking about mom guilt, he said, he goes, so mom guilt, he said, you go, I see people all the time, all of a sudden, you know, you're supposed to bring cupcakes for the bake sale for school, right? And all of a sudden, you're like, Holy smokes, you pop on Pinterest and you said, I didn't know I was supposed to have an eight-year art degree to make a cupcake, right? Okay, I got to make a, you know, I got to take a torch to, you know, and all this kind of stuff to make a, he goes, and so finally, you know, after about three or four attempts, you just give up and he goes, and then you're going to Publix and you're doing the walk of shame. Like, oh, okay. I'm bringing pre-made cupcakes to a bake sale. It goes, and, but you know what? That's okay. And we allow ourselves and, but, but pretty soon we're feeling guilty about that, right? And we shouldn't, Right. And so part of our problem is that we overschedule ourselves, right? Where do we get so, you know, I can't, it feels like I don't have enough time. Well, it's your own fault because you've scheduled things. You've allowed that. You're in charge of your schedule, right? You have every right to say no to something, right? It's in, and I've learned that it's been so powerful when I've learned to say no, all right? It's been very freeing, right? Now I can, you know, uh, not worry about having to rush a thousand miles an hour because it seems like I'm just late again, right? Because because I'm, I'm in, and I get there and I'm supposed to be engaged with somebody and I'm just like totally amped up because I just fought traffic for 45. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, no, you know what? I'm gonna back that up and we'll do it tomorrow. I'm gonna schedule less things in my life, mm -hmm. all right, and allow myself the freedom to to do that, all right. And so having that schedule is very helpful, you know. It helps even like since, I, since real estate is so caught up and you get pulled away. And in my personal life, like, dental appointment. Yeah, right. I did yeah, all this last week, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Right. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you get caught up. Yeah, you get caught up. It's absolutely. And, you know, and, and actually seeing it, that's why I like the old school calendar for me, because I can see it. You know what I mean? I'm saying, and I know you can see it on your phone. and all. I know I, I get that. For me, it's just like, man, I can see. And there was a time when I was actually, which was I wanted to track what I was doing a little bit better. So I, I highlighted everything in different colors. Like green meant uh, I was that was a, a revenue generating time. You know what I mean? That was money making. Um, pink was you know family time because that was more love. You know what I mean? So I just did it and I wanted to see and it was kind of a visual even more speaking to me. I did it for like four weeks in a row. Oh, very cool, awesome. Where you kind of be in just right now you can all say okay where are my priorities and am I am I truly living out that? That's awesome. All right, let's see. Yeah. How much I'm not doing. Well, that's okay though. But but at least you know what the first start to changing is to realize we need to change, right? Okay, going through and just doing the same thing over and not realizing we need to change is you know we're just going to keep doing the same thing. Green's not always the most important one, right? No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. But also, it's not. It's, you have to have. Right. Absolutely. Okay. He she heard that and said, "What are you talking about, man? That formula yeah. doesn't come free." Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can love, but part of me loving my family is providing, right? And so all those things are important, it's a, but an equal balance. And so that's kind of cool. Well, that's great. Thank you for sharing. That's, and the goal is to make it, you know, eye-opening, right? And to, to do that. Nana. Um, I did my blogging. Good. Um, I did uh, three rituals, I mean, in the morning. Yeah. And uh, the Sunday, I couldn't do it, stick to it, because right? uh, I had a, I noticed like a, on Saturday night, I was in Agropolis right. with my husband, and the thing is, I knew some friends who was talking, 
that the minister in Lebanon for for in uh, uh, for the affair in, right. uh, immigrant is gonna be here uh -huh. in Tampa on Sunday. Yeah. Meaning the next day. Right. So it's a good event. Yeah. So I need to be there. Sure. So uh, I start, you know, talking with the guy. Yeah. And get to know him better. So this way, I, he can get to know me. Sure. And. Uh, and that's what happened. Then after I come back home around 11.30, right. I made an email for everybody I know that this guy, I mean, the document right. is coming tomorrow morning. Perfect. On Sunday, so can, we can meet each other there. Awesome. Okay, and um, my Sunday, I mean, I had to stick to a new plan. Right. The plan I had before, it had to be All got changed, right? And I thought, this is a good for me sure. to be in that community. Absolutely. To know each other and know about me. It's a networking and type event. Yeah, absolutely. That community. Sure. And at the end, I can tell them that I'm a real estate agent. Yeah. I don't have to just, you know, to tell them from the beginning. All right. And then this way people get to know me. And sure. And now I can help you. Yeah. And that's what I did. Awesome. Um, it was fun. Yeah. And I get to know a lot of people there. And some of them, they need to buy a home. Right. And I told him I can help you. Sure. So uh, it was good. Awesome. It's a great networking I time. I to my uh, plan that I did it. But right. I mean, I found this one is way, it would be better. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, usually in the morning, I have a, um, uh, I always, always pray in the morning. Good. Uh, Sometimes do walking. Yeah, that that's good. Walk. Yeah. Uh, but everything is scheduled. And I have... You know, that's from yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, you've been doing because that. Because I'm, uh, before, you know, I, I, I'm a real estate agent, <coughs> I all, I'm an organized person. Sure. I like to do everything in, uh, but, you know, you cannot stick all the time. No, no, time but, right. Some events Things happen. change, right. Yeah, kids get sick, you know, you know, so right. change. But in order to live my life, like I love, right. I mean, I always plan, you well, know, I have the time. That's awesome. I stick to my schedule, like, that's, you know. Well, good. It sounds like you had, and that's, and that's again, there's, there's that freedom and structure, right? That, that yeah. becomes very freeing, knowing where I'm supposed to be, and at least there's a game plan to, to attack. Yeah. Good. And awesome. by the way, I don't have a car, so it was hot this week, because I gave my car to my daughter. She uh, moved to St. Pete in college. Right, right. So I'm stuck with no car, so I right. have to just, well, my husband, take him to his job. And right. Come back, come back and do what I have. And I have a... Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm from Bayer. He gave me a hard time this week right. to stick my to my uh, 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 sleep time. Right. And yeah. So uh, <coughs> we did the contract, and after we did the contract, and we did the inspection, we passed the inspection time, and he still thinks I wanna, you know, uh, I wanna back out. Uh, I don't wanna, you know, I wanna cancel. I said, okay, you wanna cancel? You're gonna lose your deposit. Sure. And he said, no, I mean, it was hard and keep texting me back and forth the whole day, disturbing me. I mean, I couldn't, you know, focus on my plan like right. I was supposed to. Sure. But that was one, one of the challenges I had sure. to... Uh, to well, yeah, here's the beauty is learn to take control of that situation and say, hey, look, you know what? Not going to happen. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I said. That's right. I said you have two options. Yeah, right. Either you stick to your contra, which is... Right. It's your option. Uh, right. I'm not gonna you to yeah, right. Anything. Or you can cancel and have no problem as well, but you're gonna lose your deposit. You can yeah. lose your deposit yeah. because yeah. we passed already. Right, we we're okay. past that you period. Have that time, yeah. and I told you before. Yep. Okay, why you didn't bother to tell me you wanna cancel? Now you tell me now after we passed that period of time. It's not about you or me. What do you believe? You what right. said? There is a term right here. Right. You have to consider. Right. And the uh, time is an asset. Right. The right. So, right. I can do anything for you. Right. That's good. And then, you know what? And then if he wants to keep texting about that, say, hey, you know what? I got other things to work on right now. You know, quite frankly, I have other buyers that do want to buy a house, not cancel contracts. I don't get paid on cancel contracts. I get paid on ratified, fully executed, and closed contracts. So have a great day. I'm going to go sit in an open house so I can go meet another buyer and not worry about Because I'm telling you, once you get to the power of having so many buyers, I mean, you already Daniel's working with five or six, you said right now, right? It feels very freeing. Somebody starts to become an a-hole or too, too needy, have a great day, All right? I, don't know, I, you know, I, I need buyers. I don't need you, period. I, I'm seriously. I mean, and, and you say it in a very loving way, right? But I'm not going to allow you to, to dominate my time. Not going to happen. 
All right, if there's no end to a mean, you know, there's no means feed, to an end here. Feed them to the bagel guys. That's right, exactly. I sure know. Yeah, yeah, let them, hey, look, you know? And so it becomes very freeing. So. And after I finished that, he told me, oh, okay, I'm going to stick to the camera. And then, okay, I said, we have an addenda, you have to sign. Yeah. Okay. So he paid one. So he said, okay, I'll meet you because I, is, I mean, I sent it. But email, sign. right. And he said, well, I don't know about this stuff, you know, he just found right. out, you know, an excuse. And said, okay, what do you want? Do you want to meet? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. And said, okay, at 12.30. I said, okay. And then after that, he called me and he said, um, he texted me and said, I'm sorry, I can't do it at that time. Um, whatever. Then I said, I'll call you later. And I said, okay. And then later on, I waited until 6 o'clock and he died. He never called. So I called him back and he said, well, okay, I'm hesitating about the house. I said, there's no hesitation. Yeah, you got your two options. I've told you, have a great day. Let me know. You email me when you're ready to make a decision. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, no decision means that you're canceling. I mean, sometimes they give you a hard time. Yeah. In the morning, yes, I'm going to stick yeah. to it. In the afternoon, no. Move on. I'm just telling you. Yeah. You know what? Move on, find another buyer. I'm just telling you. They're that easy to find. Ask Daniel. Ask Chris. They're that easy to find. The thing is, okay. I don't care. If you want to cancel, I will cancel. I understand. But he doesn't want to. Yep. But Got the that. thing deep inside, no, he's not going to lose his deposit. Right. Well, whatever. He can thank all he wants, but that's yeah, between him and the seller, right? Not between us. Not my decision to make. Well, good. Good job. All right. Over here, how are we doing? Well, I wasn't here last session. Oh, you weren't? Okay. So, okay. But what? Um, I did read the book. Good. Um, this one? Yeah. Oh, so, so you caught. You caught. Session, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Good. All right. Um, Awesome. What's your first and tens? Perfect. Good. Awesome. Time block? Do you time block? Uh, not as well as I should. Okay, that's right. You didn't have the the, the assignment because you weren't here, so now you know. All right. Time block is just one day. You know, it just again, it's just again, it, it doesn't take but five minutes to time block a day. I'm just telling you. I mean, it's some of our, some of our day is pretty well scheduled for us. We have no choice, right? I would say I'm pretty much yeah. My day perfect. My yeah, that's right, and that's good. And then, you know, I encourage you to write it down because that way you'll begin to see. Hey, look, for me at least, when I time block too much in my head, then that's when I end up missing appointments and/or forgetting things and/or overscheduling myself. Right? When I and I'm talking everything from where I'm supposed to be at the boys' school to I mean, I I have to write it all down. All right? There's the 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 joke around the McDougal house is that Dad has a steel sieve. Of a trap, you know. I, I say steel trap, and they say steel sieve. You guys know a sieve is like a colander or a strainer, right? Okay, the things just leak out. Okay, <laughs> right? Exactly, it leaks like a sieve. And so I say I have a steel trap. Oh, I got it locked in. They're like, oh, yeah, write it down. Okay, <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah, me too. All right, so good. All right, cool, awesome. All right, how are we doing? Yeah. I am almost done with the book. Yeah. Really good book. It is a good book, isn't it? Good, um, good. And did a time block session. I mean, I already do it because I'm a mom. Right, right, right. Um, I didn't implement everything that I did time block, but I did, okay. you know, okay. I, I set a schedule. My rituals, um, I, I pretty much keep them except for my pre-sleep. I don't, I mean, I, you know, I do reflect on my day, but I so, just, at the end of the day, I like to just have that quiet time after my kids have gone to bed. Well, that's good. I mean, that, that's what you're talking to me. We don't need to make it a ritual, you know, and if it is Netflix, if it's, you know, what, let me have, watch House of Cards or whatever, that's, okay, do what you want to do, right? But just make it so it's not all about, because you've got to have some you time, yes. right? Absolutely, I get that, because if not, especially with a parent, with young children, next thing you know, man, it's like, you uh, burn out, you're like wigging out, hey, where'd Melinda go? She's, you know, in Germany somewhere, just said, I'm giving up on life, have at it, you know what I mean? You guys deal with it, I'm done, all right? Guys, take, 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 take. It's time for me a little bit, so now I'm off for three and a half months. All right, come find me. All right, I saved up cash. I'm not even using credit cards, so I'm untrackable. All right, okay. Good idea. I'm putting all sorts of seeds in here. Right? Well, that sounds good. All right. Getting off grid. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Sure enough, exactly. Well, cool. Well, that sounds, you know, that's, that's good. And, you know, real quickly on the book, have you guys ever read Og Mandino before? Okay. Og's got a very interesting story. So, so Google him, all right? As a matter of fact, in one of his, he's written several books. There's The Greatest Salesman in the World, Part Two, And then he has The Gift of Akbar, and it's all sorts of really cool. He's a, a wonderful storyteller, right? And teaching through his stories. The cool thing um, 
interesting about, I think it's one of his books, he, he tells kind of his story. But in essence, okay, so he's now, I think he's not, he's not living any longer, but um, in the 40s or 50s, all right, he was in his 30s, had lost his family due to alcoholism, all right, living on the street, and a turning point in his life, he, was, he had cobbled together like 37 bucks, and he was standing in front of a pawn shop looking at the guns that he could buy to, to, to end his life, okay? All right, so this is where this guy was, right? And something in the reflection of the window caught him, you know what I mean, and it revolutionized, and so he went from there, decided that, you know what, no. I'm gonna pull myself up, yeah, you know what, I have lots of guilt. I lost a family, I was an a-hole and, and rude to my, you know what I mean, I was just haven't been a good person, right? But that doesn't define me going forward. And so he decided to make a change. Here's the, I'm setting the bar now. So, and, he, and he did and became one of the uh, best insurance salesmen in, the, in all of Chicago and just really, and, and so his story, and then he decided to get into writing you know, this kind of stuff and had this talent. It's really powerful. You get goosebumps when you just think about where he was and where now, how many lives he's been able to affect because he did, chose not to end his life, right? And that people get it. So the, the books are very, very powerful. So that's really cool. Awesome. All right, how we do? Um, I did the uh, time blocking. Awesome. Saw that. Good, good. I did that on Sunday night. Cool. And good. And I wrote it in pencil like you nice. suggested. Nice. Good. Um, made a couple of changes as the week went on. Nice. So what pencil's all about. Stuff came out, absolutely. <laughs> um, the rituals, I struggled with the morning ritual. Uh -huh. um, Affirmations and blessings and that kind of stuff, or just what to say, or more the exercise, or? Not those. It was uh -huh. more along the lines of doing the... You know, the first and ten calls, and yep. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I was getting up. Um, I was doing what I needed to do in the morning. Mm -hmm. I was getting to my desk, checking my email, finding right. a crap storm of stuff that was going on, right. from other deals, um, because I did do my pre-leave ritual and kind of shut it off. Right, good. And then um, that stuff kind of consumed me, so I need okay. to okay. better figure out what to do with that. And one, one suggestion there might be, if you have that first and ten list of stuff, mm -hmm. do that before you even open your email. Okay. It's a, it's a hard thing to do. I get it, yeah. right? Because email is just with us everywhere we go, right? right. Pretty soon it will be built into the retina of our eyes. I guarantee it, right? It's what are these, where are these special contacts and your emails will show up right there. You, can, you know what I mean? I, I'm telling you, it's coming, right? And so learn, it's just say no to that, right? And, and, but that's, that's just a suggestion. It's hard. I get it. It would take a disciplined effect. Okay, cool. Um, I did read the book. Awesome, good. And I uh, have been on Facebook quite a bit. Awesome, day. great. Perfect. Actually, good deal. I, um, I had previously learned from a, my previous broker, and um, you actually made a correction on the Facebook. Oh, yeah, about you put, first to put pen to paper and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, that stuff. that's so, good. I mean, the group is, if you're not on it or you're not using it, um, that's very valuable. Yeah, it's, um, it's you know, again, and, and, that's, and that's the beauty of the group, like I said, because it's, you know, it's uh, highly encourage you to get there, first of all, for... We're now over a thousand agents, so it's it's helpful if as many of you are on there as possible. You can answer each other's questions, and we're Jim and I are good with that. Yep. And we just like 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 like. That's a good answer. Good answer. Good answer. I'm done. All right. Okay, I can move on. All right. <laughs> and uh, it's beauty of helping each other out. So overall, great job on those guys. Really good. Okay. That's the power of accountability, and hopefully, you're beginning to see when you do this kind of stuff how you know what it becomes more of a way of life because I like it better when I do, right? Um, I do those things. All right. So. Um, we talked about this, you know, you guys know all these, all right, what we're doing. Okay, so here are our assignments for this time, all right. Uh, again, I'll post this by Friday morning, usually Friday afternoon. I'll, I'll post it on the 100K group page, but if you want to write them down, okay. Um, what's that? I'm sorry, my, uh, I have the Keller Williams uh, Million Dollar Real Estate Agent on my... Oh, cool, awesome. It's just starting to play. Oh, good. No, that's a good. That's a good book, actually. When do they read in the next? Yeah, we do read that in the next. It, it's a, it's a great book. All right. By the way, you I mean this? I got to get to the stage in my life where I can just put my name on a book and it sells like these guys because all Gary Keller did to read that to read to write that book was interview a bunch of top producing agents. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, it's not as good as Michael Mayer's. As, as like well, I agree. Well, it's a different level it's a different and type yeah. Of writing. And there's a lot of stuff that when I go through that with the group. I there's some things I I think they're heavily they're way too much overhead in these yeah. teams that they could do it for a lot less money, <laughs> okay? You know, the fact that they're selling $80 million worth of real estate and still only making a million dollars, 
there's you know, a there's a problem there. You're, if you're having to spend 1.4 to to make two, you know, to make 2.4, I think you got overhead issues. I agree. Yeah. So, um, so session four, affirm, continue with your affirmations. I'm again, we want to get that we're not tattoo on our mind, right? And some of us have some tattoos on our mind that we need to get rid of, and that's what the affirmations do. Here is the. I'll start with the uh, the greatest salesman. The, you know, the, the scrolls that I post, those are not the whole scrolls, right? Um, and those are just my versions, things that I picked out that spoke to me, all right? So the different things that speak to you. What I'm going to do is those, those nine that spoke to me, I'm going to commit over the next nine weeks, I'm going to memorize those, all right? Because I, I don't have them memorized right now, all right? So I'm going to memorize, uh, um, what's that? I guess it's the 10 uh, yeah, I, mean, I think the last one's just kind of a wrap up, though, isn't it, or something? It's kind of a, 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 a redo. So memorize the tenth one if you want to. I think I just uh, back in the day um, I stopped at nine, but on the ninth uh, I'm going to memorize those just because those are things for me to speak into myself. By the way, I, I'm also gotten back uh, just because I need to stretch my brain a little bit and make sure I'm seeing like I'm not. I don't have the steel trap that I thought I once had. All right, so I got yeah, that's a that's a muscle that needs to be uh, exercised. All right, so. Uh, not exorcised, but exercised, right? Um, but uh, w with that muscle that I want to exercise, I started memorizing. I used to have the first chap eight chapters of Proverbs memorized, um, and I've, I've lost. It's still back there somewhere, all right? But I've gotten back into it. And what I'm doing now is in my uh, calendar, I'm actually handwriting on each day, the, the top. I'm just writing the verse as I go through. So I'm now up to, I've got, I started back with chapter one. It's easy chapter one because I still have it. It's back there somewhere, so it's not. So once I get past some of these other early chapters, I'll have to struggle with it again. But it'll take me about three and a half or four years um, to memorize the whole book of Proverbs. And, you know, but how many am I going to memorize it if I don't start? So I'm going to memorize these. Take that challenge. Don't take a challenge. If not, do your affirmations. And remember, by writing your affirmations, sometimes those will, those will lock in. What's what I'm going to do is each week, I'm going to memorize one a week. All right, and get those locked in uh, for me. So affirmations, all right, make the four rituals a way of life. Continue on if you haven't done them, but make the four rituals a way of life, all right? Be, don't, again, don't make it a task to do every day. I want you to see how the difference in good, clean eating and, and dirty eating, right? Okay, what I feel like when I do it, when do I feel like when I don't, all right? My day went better when I did, so let me do some more of that, right? So let's, let's continue to do that. Uh, continue to eat right and, and physical fitness, all right? You don't want Samuel telling you that you got a soft pillow, all right, there, okay? <laughs> all right, so we can get that done, all right? Meet with your accountability partner. That's key. Melinda, remind me, who's your accountability partner? Is it Brian? It is Brian. Okay, good. Yeah. Awesome. Good. He, he did, he texted me last night and he said that he's sick, okay. but he did report, he sent me an email of, okay. of what homework assignments he did. Okay, good. How do you do? So, he's actually, he is rocking it. Awesome. He's That's great. Me. Yeah, good, good. He's a good guy. We like Brian a lot. Um, yeah, he's. I, I like people that implement, and he's he's an implementer and, and not afraid to work. And you know, uh, he's a, he's a really good guy. So, um, uh, good job. Okay, perfect. Tell him we said, Hama. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, meet with your accountability partner. Write two success stories. Begin if you don't get them fully written. Again, these are success stories. Are just, you know what? I remember when I really helped that. Recently, it's you know it's funny because my success stories were never the biggest sales. It was the little old lady who was recently widowed and they had no equity whatsoever and I sold their home all practically for free, right? Just to make it work. Cause she, I was, you know, I was doing the right thing, all right? It was the first time home buyer who I, you know, didn't think they could ever dream of, you know, they come from a, a cycle of everybody rented in their, in their family and all of a sudden they were the first homeowners. You talk about first generation college, you know, graduates. How about a first generation Homeowner, right? Exactly. No one else in their cycle. Someone's got to break that cycle. Someone's got to break that chain because all they're doing is teaching each other the same thing, right? If this is just, you know, so someone's got to be the chain breaker um, uh, to make that happen. So um, begin your spectrum of solutions. Just research some, right, that are on the website. Uh, just get an idea of, you know, maybe see some other, what some other agents are doing. Um, one thing, Charlie Bancroft, Charlie, you know, that it's in there. He has, um, it's not really a spectrum of solutions, but he's got a really cool flyer that he made on Fiverr, mm -hmm. right? That talks about how I work with buyers. I love working with buyers. He hands out at his uh, open houses. I copied his idea. Good. All right, good. And do you have a copy? Of, do you have one uh, like it or something? Yeah, or I can email it to you. Yeah, or can you post it on the uh, group yeah, page? I can post it. Yeah, it post it on the group page. Just because that's a really cool concept. I and mean, Charlie, would, he posted it on, on the group page too. So he just had Fiverr make it up and you kind of do something similar. You know, just again, something to hand out to people so they walk away with it and, and say, hey, yeah, you know, reason to keep, 
you know, back in the day, I didn't have all this clip art and word and all this kind of, you know, so what did I do? I took my business card, printed a copy of the public records, all right, and because these weren't in the MLS, a lot of these uh, listings were not in the MLS, and I taped my thing at the bottom, made 58 copies of it, and took them with me, all right? So here's public records, and here's my card, all right? It's all with you. Here you go. That's what I handed out, real fancy, all right? Sold 100 homes a year. I also put things up in laundromats, but that's me. All right. Have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, okay? So your goal is to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. What does that mean? Coffee with someone. How tough is that? All right. Here's your job. Go have coffee with a friend, okay? Here's your job. Go to Panera Bread and get a salad, all right? Whatever, okay? Just go meet up with somebody, okay, and just go hang out and catch up, all right? Somebody had, okay? Easy enough, all right? And then have a traffic generating event. You guys are going to do it. Those of you who are tasting it already, tasting the success, are saying, why wouldn't I? All right? I get it. All right? Those of you who haven't done one yet, go have a traffic generating. What does that mean? Open house, uh, the flea market, whatever you've got going for your traffic. Okay? Have at least one traffic generating event between now and then we meet. All right? Just do it. I don't have my, just do it. Yeah, but where do I, I just do it. How do I find, just do it. All right, That's, I, you know what? It's just, just go make it happen. Other people are, right? Okay, try it, and then if you don't have some success with it or you can't find one, hey, does anybody know? Hey, try Janie Maloney. Hey, try Christina Griffin. Hey, try, you know what I mean? Whatever, just post it out there. You'll find, if you want to, you'll figure out a way to have one. All right? MLS, key in the city you want to be in, something by your house, and click REO. Yeah. And then call one, two, three. I don't even call them, I text or email. So, uh, yeah, that's even better. Uh, get permission, all right, because you don't want to just be there, all right, so. And I have it documented, too. So. Yeah, right, and that's right, even better, all right, so, yeah, and, and send them a text, and say, hey, can I send an open house, and boom, uh, email, boom, that's all exactly right. That's exactly what I did. Um, I sent out 12 emails, I got five no's back, and I got um, two people, Christina Griffin was one Good, one, yeah. I couldn't remember her name from the meeting. I yeah, right, it down, yeah. But I just happened to stumble on one of hers. Perfect. One of hers, and I found somebody else that, has given me exclusive marketing rates of her RDO <laughs> property now Good. in Atlanta Lakes. Awesome. That's Perfect. That's all you need. Just a heads up, guys, to save you guys a few minutes. If you go after Christina's listings for doing those, if it is owned by Fannie Mae, she can't let you do those. Okay. It's Coldwell Banker only. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. So just, if you yeah. get plenty of REOs, Future Home Realty always has agents who will let you. Yeah, right. And even on the 100K, some of our higher age producing agents know they're members of 100K, even though they're not really coming to 100K meetings, but they know they'd like to be members there because if they got, hey, I got a seller who's bugging the heck out of me, wants an open house sat, and I, I don't have time, boom, they put it out there and they know they've got a bunch of hungry people. All right? Because there are two or three out there right now that got posted last we night. Got one in Groves, uh, between me and Tatiana, and I think someone else, we worked that house for a week and a half. Right? You just bled it dry. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely, I'm that's cool. So sad that Ario, that's the only one Jamie Maloney has in, in like the area. It's already, yeah, it's just, yeah. it's a magnet. It's like, it. it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I know, it's like I've got three there. You know? That's right, we'll so keep it up and you get it until it, you know, till the day it closes, man. Yeah, uh, get it done. So, all right, so everybody good there? I think that's our last, yep, that's our last uh, bullet point. So, everybody got those? Yeah. I'll post them, they'll be there. All right. Any questions, anything, concerns, big issues, big rocks I can help with right now? need a referral. Okay. What's that? You need a referral. I need a referral. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's right. What's your biggest challenge right now? Right. Exactly. <laughs> and how can I help? There you go. Let's see. I'm just trying to live it out. I'm just trying to lead by example, right? And how we, how we roll. All right. Great job. Way to be here. All right. Keep it up. Um, two weeks from today is our next meeting, I guess. All right, we'll be, we'll be back here. Um, and keep posting. If you have any questions, reach out. The best way to uh, reach out is through the, tech, the group page because that way if I don't have time to answer it, somebody else will have the answer before I get there. All right, so that's even better. Cool? All right. Same place? Same place. We're here.